The scripture reading today comes from Luke 9, verses 23 through 27. Then he said to them, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross daily and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for me will save it. What good is it for someone to gain the whole world and yet lose or forfeit their very self? Whoever is ashamed of me and my words, the Son of Man will be ashamed of them. And when he comes to his glory and in the glory of the Father and of the holy angels, truly I tell you, someone who, some who are standing here will not taste death before they see the kingdom of God. Amen. Thank you, Katie. Today we'd like to talk about the cost of discipleship, and it really is the cost of belonging. I asked uh, Rachel what the image was on the slide that you see it. And she has a picture of a bunch of young elementary age kids wearing green hats and sitting next to each other and you know, kind of cuddled up on a bench. I was like, what was that? And then I decided before I asked her, it was because they're all wearing green hats. And we all look like Jesus. So that must be what it is. And she said, you said belonging. And, I, and then I remember the picture. And I thought, oh, of course, we said belonging. We all belong here. We wear green hats because we all belong here. Now, this place that we all take communion, not why? We belong here. But this, uh, that was wrong. I'd like to tell you that Jesus is speaking to his followers. And he's speaking to them on the eve of right there, right before a big transition. Talk about how big the transition is. In fact, the whole definition of belonging to God is going to change. Can you think of a bigger transition? This is how we thought we belonged to God. Now this is how we now know we belong to God. You're, you could be out. You might be out. You are afraid to death that you're out. And now you're in. Those people we know, we like we like keeping them out. Now they're in. Big deal. Belonging change. I hope you haven't had the experience of hating God chose to plenty of people have come and sat down with me in my office or met talking open up with me at a coffee shop told me that they really hate. They love it. And they keep going to a job that they don't really find be what they want because they get paid. There are folks that would give the testimony that they hate their job. And they work for a boss that they don't like when they hear. In fact, the job they do, they're not sure if it does good. And in some cases, I know most of the boss the job they did actually did harm. They kept doing the work because I like I guess it really is a cost of discipleship, and the cost of discipleship comes with what, it, what you get for a disciple. <laughs> well, Jesus was headed when he spoke these words that, G that Daniel read for us. He was headed to the cross, but on the way he went to the temple. I just want to remind you of that story. Many of you already know it. Perhaps some of you haven't thought of it recently or haven't, didn't really know it. But he gets to the temple, and he gets kind of testy with the temple people. Remember him getting tested? And then he, he, he clears the map. And he just, he wants to be clear. He said, it is written, my house will be a house of prayer. But you have made it in Now, he's actually quoting Isaiah. So I just thought we just give Isaiah a fuller thing. Isaiah chapter 56, verse 7. I will bring to my holy mountain and give them joy in my house of prayer. And give them joy in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and sacrifices will be accepted from my house. And my house will be called a house of prayer for all nations. 
the house of prayer for how many? You understand Isaiah man. People that tell Jesus to the cross and stop the man. Next sovereign, the sovereign Lord declares. Capital S, capital L, pointing to the word God. The Lord says, he gathers the exiles of Israel. I will gather still others to them besides those already gathered. I will gather others besides those already gathered. Jesus, Messiah, walks along and says, I have sheep of the fold you don't know. Peter is told to eat of unclean food, and he says, No, I won't eat in the vision God gave us. And he, and he has to have a vision three times, so we finally understand that God is not a respecter of persons, or either, in other words, God doesn't play favor. We play favor. Religion doesn't play favorites because religion is just the people who can't let go of the empire and make up their own soul power structure. That we, this thing, because I, I can't help it, I keep finding myself on the favor. In fact, y'all are on the favor. For whatever that's worth, <clears throat> y'all are all on the favor. Um, and the Lord says, don't, don't play favor. I can't help it. When I think of the future of this church, I think of building our church. Jesus comes along and says, well, make some things in your church that would include those other things. Really? You want us to make things that would attract them? Very challenging. As we shape our future together in Christ, we decide to shape the church, not only for those of us who are already coming to the house, but who God wants to gather. This is a question when Jesus says, if you would come after me, or whoever would come after me, it's a question of who we want to be and who tells us who we are. Who we want to be, who tells us who we are. You say, well, nobody tells me who I am. Yeah, that, that was that one before you got to him. When you walked on the playground in kindergarten, you already were. Sick. In fact, the truth is, by the time you're five, you are who you're always going to be, and you'll decide what else you can. You cannot stop being basic of what you were when you were about. But by the time your brain has learned to use language to tell stories, you have a story in your head and you're part of it, and I'm part of my story. And when you meet somebody on the playground in kindergarten, you're trying to integrate them in your story. And you're integrating those people or segregating yourself with those people based on the stories you were told before you turned around. People who have trauma before the age. Whole life trauma. People who have trauma late. Talk it up in the court. Much easier to get over trauma that's not part of your basic story. Story found. But it's a question of who we want to be and who tells us who we are. And I would just like to say that evangelism has been misled over the years with an emphasis. Not this led to something that isn't a good question, but this led to something that has become, I think, poorly towards the Because I took the training and I taught the training to ask somebody, if you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you accept that you have to We have in that moment said, if you want a deal now, it pays off later. And we have in that moment suggested that the deal doesn't pay off until. And that it doesn't pay off for everybody, it just pays off for the people who get their pay. Think about it. When I finally thought about it, it was because people were telling me what they thought when I asked them the question. I won't go into all the stories from the people I asked that question to in Brazil to a translator. But if anything you want, we'll tell them just a bunch of stories. Their really question was, so you're asking this question, so I go to heaven when you die. Yeah, anyway, I hope you can see where those questions go. Then why would I do it now if I just go to heaven when I die? Then why would I stop being a believer? Come on. Why would I stop being happy? Why have Jesus in your life now when I know I've been baptized? I've been told by the priest I'm going to heaven. What else is there? 
I was just a feeling. I hadn't planned to go into all those stories, so I'll stop. Uh, but I've seen people say, I belong to my boss at work. I don't belong to my boss at work. I would just like to say, there's a boss you don't belong to at work. In the middle of the, in the middle of the, and not only that boss, that boss who gives you a job to love. A boss you trust to love you. And the payoff is to cure down forever. Right? But I'm telling you, it's hard to believe that. And some people don't want it to be true. Because they like being true. Like all the people. Like being in charge. Jesus comes along and says, everybody's people and everybody's included. People in charge who are the favorites for the Lord don't really want to hear it, including me. I have to serve them. Second thing I point out is the significance of our lives can be defined either by sin in, our, in us as individuals and sin in our empires, the systems we play part in, where we work, our communities, our nation, our world. Or we can, we can then find that our significance is found in the love of God and the kingdom. Remember, I take the G out of kingdom, not just to be cute, but to help us remember the kingdom of Christ isn't with a, with a Lord over us, but, but a servant who watches the feet. The kingdom is that we're all related. We're all part of the children of God. That's the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is Jesus. In fact, what we're doing right now on Sunday is that we're getting together on the Lord's Day to say to ourselves, to each other, and to the world, everything we're about to do when we leave this gathering is in light of the Lordship of Jesus Christ. It is informed by the Lordship of Jesus Christ. It is guided by the Spirit of Jesus Christ. It will perpetuate and demonstrate and bring about the coming of everything Christ has been. That's what we do because we meet here and we take Christ again as our Lord. Right? I'm just saying, but I still struggle with it. I don't know about y'all, but uh, by, by Sunday afternoon, as cute as she is, came my God. And I had a distant talk. It wasn't just here. You know, or it might be that somebody on the way home touched me on, which has happened more than one time. Or left. I don't know if you've noticed, but there are mattresses. It's a mattress factory going on the road lately. Tammy and I have run over. I've run over two mattresses. Lay in the middle of the road. Tammy and I have a running joke. If we get it, oh, I've actually run over both mattresses. That's right. She's important. But we've seen a bunch of mattresses. What in the world people do is put the mattresses on the road. But they're there, right? They're right there in the middle of the road. And I would just like to say that. Uh, somebody does that, and I have a thought. And I think, oh, Lord, that's not what people deserve. But but that is actually what I thought they deserved for just a second there. So don't do that to them, please. Not, not right now. Each of us, Matt, each of us loving like you. Each of us healthy. Each of us treating the temple of the Spirit, our bodies, exactly like Christ. Each of us living in our homes, our houses. Each of us in the community, Wendell, Wake County, and it, it is because of us becoming exactly what you are. We're living in the nation that is becoming, receiving the testimony of the world as it is, in grace and love, and then loving our neighbors, loving our brothers, and loving our enemies. Is that what we do as a nation, as we participate in our nation? Are we who we need to be to our neighbors? Are we stewards of the earth? God has made us through the year. The significance of our lives can either be lived in slaves with the sin we have within ourselves, and the sin is part of the empires and systems we, we are part of, or we can separate ourselves from that and identify ourselves with the love of God Jesus Christ and become known as people who perpetuate, demonstrate, and bring about the love of God. Jesus was not easy, he was not messing around. Not thought about something that only determines where you wake up after you die. It was asking a question about how your life, your house, your condition, your world, your nation, my life, my house, my my world, my nation, 
all go. Do they go according to Christ? The cost of discipleship is that we say yes and then pay whatever price comes along. Sometimes that's not a bad thing. Uh, frankly, I think right now, following me, just sitting here with y'all, having had that butterscotch thing yesterday that happened, it was brought by somebody. I don't know who brought that butterscotch thing. Does anybody know who brought the butterscotch? Because everything was, did you bring it? Seriously? That was with me. And I have to say, I, somebody said it was good, and I went in there with a butterscotch expectation. I had this expectation of how butterscotch goes when I eat it. And I thought, oh, that's good. Yeah. That's interesting. They said it was good. It was butterscotch. And I went in there and ate that butterscotch. And I said, this is an amazing experience of that. And there's butterscotch in the book. People need to be surprised. I gotta have it. Seriously. Yeah, okay. Some people says, well, how do you turn out that way? You die. What do you mean die? No, you stop doing it the way you do it. Stop following the people you follow. You ask a different person who I'm gonna be and how I'm gonna be. When you do, people meet and they go home. Now that the nice Christian needs to go home away. Open up her this closet ticket. But this person really loves it. Dying is universal is the next one. But the content of our lives and why we die is about choosing our life. So I would just like to say you're gonna die. I don't even mean to be flippant about it. I just want to be fast. You will die. Physically you will die. And you will never die. People will remember your story for a time. They will tell your story for a time. They'll stop remembering your story and they'll stop telling your story, but you will not stop rippling through the eternity of relationships forever. You got together after my death and you told my story without a big impact on her and me, my mother and father, my grandfather. You could tell my story without including her and me. That wouldn't be my story. I don't need a fishing story. You know how many times God taught me while I was fishing? Who taught me love and fishing? Or me? That's who did. And you think you know George Fuller and why he turned out the way he did? And you don't know her and me? You're crazy. You cannot know George Fuller without understanding who her and me. And Goldie Aquility is the grandma who taught Sunday school who loved everybody. In the midst of the South that didn't love everybody, taught him to talk George. Kept telling, he didn't, I didn't actually start to, you know, I'm trying to do it. But she was telling me to love everybody. When people around me told me there's some people you love, some people you don't love. Tell those stories. Take your, leave those stories out. Take your time my story. My story will go on. Your story is going to go on. Next thing is we, the disciples of Christ. I don't mean just our denomination. I mean like our denomination. Everyone who chooses Christ have been baptized into Christ and choose daily to follow Christ. There's before we were belonging to whoever told us who we were and how we were going to live our lives. And there's now we belong to Christ and tell us who we are. We do that every day. So you're getting up to work one day and you wake up. I would just like to say there's a difference between waking up and getting out of bed. This morning, Tammy woke up before me. I stayed awake as long as she stood awake. Stayed awake and she went downstairs and back. Got some reading. I laid there trying to go back to sleep. I didn't get any reading. I just laid there, rolling over who won the game and all that stuff. You know, just do my thing. Well, there's a difference between waking up and getting up. So we're going to wake up, then we're going to get it. Well, I just want to tell you, there's a difference between getting up and going to work. You can get up and not go to work. And there's a difference between going to work and doing the job well. And there's a difference between going to work, doing the job well, and then getting your paycheck after doing the job well and getting fired after not getting, after not doing your job well. You understand? There's a progression. 
And Jesus is saying, if you would like, you can be included in those who get up, wake up, stay in here, get up, listen, go to work, do it well, and get paid. If you think you only get paid when you go to heaven, you have not met the treasure. As Jesus said, when you get it and find the treasure buried in the field, this thing I'm talking about, find it buried in the field. What do you do? Bury it, go back, buy that. And you, pay, you buy the whole field just to have that. It's after you belong. You live like Before you belong. There it is. How could I get a little of that? Some of that. And eventually get it. And the last thing is we belong in the kingdom of God. That's a treasure far greater than the one we can work. Some people have not seen Jesus. They've heard stories about Jesus, but they came from the lips of one who was not at all like him. They just kept thinking that Jesus sounds nice, but does not. Say that Jesus loves everybody, but his followers, his disciples, must be. I would like to be loved, but I'm watching all the disciples. Some people really haven't seen. I just like to say, it's good news is, hey y'all, this week you could be the one that shows. Forgive somebody who's surprised when you forgive them. And then explain to them why you did. No, it wasn't that you didn't make me very angry. No, it wasn't that I didn't feel hurt. I do that to God all the time. I'm just, I know, I know that sounds like a fact, but God loves me. God loves me. God loves me. God loves me. Real that I exist, and I accept the truth because you didn't want something to exist. Some of us have not seen. Some of us have seen, but not fully experienced. Again, I saw I saw the budget that thing. I heard somebody say that's really good. Yeah. I've had lots of budget that. I kind of like a budget that no big. Just kind of. You know, you gave me a butterscotch milkshake, there's no other butterscotch, no other milkshakes I go. That's a good milkshake. That's not the milkshake I would take. And I was having these thoughts, and I thought, here we go. Now I want to look. We trust some people when they tell you they're not somebody who's not loving you, I want to give you permission. At that moment, when they're not loving you, I follow you. Have compassion for them. Hope that they come back to Christ fully experience your $10,000 of debt forgiveness them while they try to forgive you the $100 of debt that you owe them. Jesus has the Lord. So, I invite us to stay not to forget. Some of us have been. Some of us have forget. Some of us forsake. Some of us we've seen the grace of God, we've created the grace of God. We've rehearsed it for community today. But we walk on. In fact, the way it happens is the word of God comes to our life. Seed planted in soil, all will be thorns. Let's not forget, let's not forsake. So, what I'd like us to do is flirt. I love the word flirt. I put it on the title of that book. Flirt. So, I would like us to wake up. And then I'd like us to not only wake up, but yes. 
I'd like us to not only wake up and get up, but go to work. And I would like us to enjoy work. And I would like us to recognize that when we do our work well and our faith, we are secure forever for school. But we are part of the transition from not belonging to belonging from the kingdom of the world to the kingdom of God. What if you loved your work? What if you knew the work you did didn't do harm but did good? What if you knew that you would get paid now and forever for the work you do that you love that does good for us? Lord, I thank you so much for your work. Begin with me and help us each to stay off with the reality that sometimes we forget what you've done for us, what you are for us, what you're here to help us do. Help us to serve. Help us, even in this prayer, receive your spirit. Wake up. Receive your spirit. Ourselves to get up from here to do the work of joy, do the work of love, receive, receive all that we receive as we do the work, as we see the benefits of our lives and other people's lives and their lives and our lives, and as we move toward the inheritance of all that lies in us. Thank you for your work. We choose to take up our cross. 